Okay, so once we have all of our exposures done for our animation, we want to export them. And for right now, I'm just going to export it as a movie to make this quicker, but you can export it as an image sequence, which will make the files a lot larger and the quality better, and you could then zoom in and do some camera moves and so forth in After Effects. But for now, I'm just going to export some movie clips and then take them into Final Cut Pro. So we're going to export movie and uncheck this, these two, because we want this 1920 by 1080. Uh, Pro is 422 is fine. Our frame rate's 15. So we're going to export that. And I've already exported it, as you can see. So I'm going to hit cancel, but I would label this X1 because that's our first exposure. And then I would go and choose X2, export it, call it X2, and so on. Uh, I believe there were nine takes. I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro. Okay, so we have our nine clips here. So we're going to drag them all down in here into our sequence. And we're going to put them on top of each other. Okay, and since we didn't shoot our ninth exposure for till like frame like 30 or something like that. We're just gonna scrub till we see the exposure and it starts right there. So we're just gonna trim this and we can hide that for now. And then for our eighth exposure, it starts at the same spot. So just drag that to the starting point. We're gonna hide that. Right there. And for this, you can experiment on how you want to composite it. And I find that just using Lighten, the composite mode Lighten, works the best. So as you can see here, we have our, our red element here. And we're just going to go right click and go to composite mode and then Lighten right here. And that brings in our first exposure and it just layers that nice red element right on top. And I can hide this and you see it just brings it up. And for pretty much all these elements, Lighten works. There's our third exposure, the blue element, composite, Lighten, boom. So we're going to do that for the rest of these. OK, so once we have them all rendered out, this is our final result. And with this wide shot, it's not as exciting as it could be. Now let me just show you what it looks like with just a little bit of movement put into it. And it just shows you shooting multiple passes really gives you the chance to add extra elements to it. I have to show you guys what I've been working on. Since I did this, I'm like, oh, it'd be so cool to do this on an actual car. So I went outside and I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to animate our minivan doing the time slice effect. It's going to be so awesome. I've worked on this for four nights now for like eight hours each night. And I, I have 27 frames. There's like 14 different exposures for each shot. It's cool, but I don't know if this is worth four days for this. I'm on my fifth night tonight. So I'm starting, <laughs> like it's made this big flash right here. So I'm going to start to do the time slice effect where it's going to start disappearing, but I still got to do the flames under the car. And I don't know how it'd probably take me another two nights, but it was a lot harder than I thought, but with a little bit of sound effects and some maybe added, added movement, I think it could be cool. Okay. So after showing you how to blend in your exposures in Final Cut Pro or pretty much any non-linear editing system, I wanted to show you how to do some simple masking in After Effects where we have our DeLorean here and we kind of make it look like it is actually on the road. When in reality, we were just had it on a stand here that looked like the road and we cropped it out. So to create this effect, what you need to do is take your picture of your DeLorean, however you can get it looking like it's on the road, and then you want a background plate, which is this with nothing there. And you then mask in your DeLorean and it looks like 
it is on a real road without anything holding it up. So let's import our two images, our DeLorean and then our clean plate, which I have here. And I'm gonna make a new composition by dragging it right here to this icon. Click OK. And I'll rename this so you guys can see it a little better. So we'll just call this plate. And we'll call this the DeLorean. And we'll put the DeLorean on top. Now what we also wanna do is duplicate this layer for the DeLorean and call this reference. So when we're making adjustments to our mask and we still want to see what this image looks like, we can cut this back on and, and see how it's looking. So we want to turn this off with, a, with the eye tool here. Okay, so we're just going to make a simple mask. So we'll hit G and that gives us our mask tool here, this icon. And we're going to simply just kind of cut out the DeLorean. So we're going to make some simple... A simple mask just kind of around the car. These shadows here, you want to try to get these shadows in because that really helps to create the illusion that the car is on the road. And I'm decent at After Effects, but I'm not an expert. So, you know, there, there could be better ways of doing this where you're not using up as much CPU power or uh, just a easier and better ways to do it. So please let me know if, if you guys know of better ways of masking and so forth like this. But this is the way I've used for some time and it works for me. And I know, you know, making all these points adds to uh, render time and so forth. All right, so as so we're going along here. And I know you guys can do this in Photoshop, but I'm just so used to After Effects, I just like to do it in After Effects. And also, if this was an animation stop motion sequence where I'd have to do multiple frames, uh, it would make sense to do it in After Effects. So, all right, so remember, I'm still trying to get the shadow here. And uh, we completed it, and there we go. And even at that, from a wide shot, I think that looks pretty good. So, let's say you wanted to reference it to see what it looked like with, the, with your stand on it, you can click back on there. So, that's kind of what that reference is for. Okay, so if we go in and look a little bit better, it looks like we can still kind of see the edges. So even just a simple going here and hitting F for feather, feather, and making it like 30, feathers out the edges, maybe even 40. And even that kind of, kind of works. I don't think we need to do much more finessing for this particular example because this is just a basic on how I kind of achieved this right here, this shot. But I think it looks pretty good. We could do a little bit of color correction um, to for, for maybe this, this part right here to match a little bit more of the original road. But like I said, this is just a kind of a crash course, keeping it real simple just to show you how I kind of masked in the DeLorean to this real road sequence. So if you had a lot of these shots, you would have to you know, go to your next frame and then kind of move your mask over for it to match kind of, and so on and so on. But since this is just a single image, that's kind of how we did that. So maybe we'll get a little bit more in depth into this later, but that was kind of just a, a real simplistic way of, of, uh, of how we masked in this DeLorean to create forced perspective. All right, well, that's all for now, guys. This is uh, segment three of the Back to the Future episodes, but we were going to have a fourth installment where we deal more with uh, the the miniature town of Hill Valley that we made. So we'll see you guys next time.